This is the United States of America. It has grown from the original 13 states to now 50. Why is it that no new states have joined the Union since 1959, and which one will be the 51st state? The 51st state in U.S. political discourse is a phrase that refers to areas either seriously or derisively considered candidates for the addition to the 50 states already part of the United States. Before 1959, when Alaska and Hawaii joined the U.S., the term the 49th state was used. Most commonly, the possibility of Puerto Rico becoming the 51st state was discussed as possible outcome of a proposed series of referendums to decide a change to that island's political organization. Puerto Ricans are U.S. citizens. They pay federal taxes, but have only limited representation in Congress in the form of a resident commissioner, a non-voting delegate. Although they are U.S. citizens, they cannot vote in the U.S. presidential election. How does it come that the island of Puerto Rico in the Caribbean islands became a part of the United States, but still isn't a fully integrated part? On July 25, 1898, during the Spanish-American War, Puerto Rico was invaded by the United States with a landing at Guanaca. As an outcome of the war, Spain ceded Puerto Rico along with the Philippines and Guam. Here's the question, is the United States ready to add another state? Could Puerto Rico once and for all become our 51st state? Now, this is not a new issue. In fact, it's come up many times before. Since 1898, Puerto Rico has been a commonwealth associated with the United States after the Spanish-American War. And though it's an American territory, it is self-governing with its own governor, its own house, and its own Senate. But at the same time, Puerto Rico's federal matters, like the military and social security are controlled by the United States and President Bush is Puerto Rico's chief of state. But Puerto Rico is not considered one of our United States. Congress was... All people born in Puerto Rico become citizens of the U.S. at birth, but citizens residing in Puerto Rico cannot vote for president or for full members of either House of Congress. Full statehood would obviously grant island residents full voting rights at the federal level. Is Puerto Rico the only territory that could be the 51st state? Well, throughout our history, there's been many more or less serious suggestions of new areas that should become statehood. Of the potential candidates for statehood, citizens of the District of Columbia tend to be most supportive of their statehood movement. Washington, D.C. residents who support this movement sometimes use the Revolutionary War protest motto, taxation without representation, denoting their lack of congressional representation. The phrase is now printed on newly issued Washington, D.C. license plates. Other less likely contenders are Guam and the U.S. Virgin Islands, both of which are unincorporated organized territories of the United States. Also, the Northern Mariana Islands, which is a commonwealth like Puerto Rico and American Samoa, an unorganized, unincorporated territory, could both attempt to gain statehood. Some proposals call for the Virgin Islands to be admitted with Puerto Rico as one state. If Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands formed a state, it would have over 4 million residents, the same, for example, as the state of Oregon. Since the adoption of the U.S. Constitution, four states have been created from parts of an existing state. Maine from Massachusetts, West Virginia from Virginia, Kentucky also from Virginia, and Vermont from New York. New York City has had proponents of its independent statehood as far back as 1787. It has long been commonly recognized that much of the upstate is of a different world at NYC. Such proposals have been supported from the upstate side as well, as some upstate residents also feel that voters in New York City either ignore their economic woes or use their dominance in state government to enact exploitative legislation that favors New York City to split off into their own state as well. This has also been discussed in Chicago, Detroit, and some believe California should be split in a north and south part. In 2011, President Barack Obama was the first president since John F. Kennedy to make a presidential visit to Puerto Rico. First of all, we've addressed the question of political status. In March, a report from our presidential task force on Puerto Rican status provided a meaningful way forward on this question so that the residents of the island can determine their own future. In October 2011, Governor Luis Fortunio set August 12, 2012 to hold the first part of a two-step status plebiscite. If a second status vote is required, 
that will take place on the same day as the general election in November 6, 2012. A bill was brought before the Legislative Assembly of Puerto Rico in 2011 to affect the governor's proposal. The bill passed on December 28, 2011. Both referendums, however, will be held on a single ballot on November 6, 2012. The first referendum will ask voters whether they want to maintain the current Commonwealth status under the Territorial Clause of the United States Constitution, or whether they prefer a non-territorial option. If more voters check the non-territorial option, a second vote will be held, giving people three status options, statehood, independence, or free association. So, will Puerto Rico be the 51st state, or will another area make it there first?